Hello everyone, it is Kendra. Welcome to my bookshelf. It has been too long since I sat here and talked about what I've been reading. I think the last time I did one of these was November, so this is going to be a winter wrap-up. Everything that I have read from December through now to March, as of like a week ago, it is spring, so I wanted to talk about everything I have been reading and let me know what you've been reading down below too. Let's get some discussions going. Let me know if you've read these books, what you thought about them, and you know, subscribe to the channel, comment, like this video if you enjoy, and let's get into all of the books that I've been reading. Man, I really wanted to wear my glasses, but even with the help of natural light and this lower, not gonna happen. Let's get my handy dandy notebook out, okay? Welcome to Blue's Clues. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, wow. If I seem really distracted, it's because, let's see, it's 9.15 a.m. That's why the birds are chirping, that's why the sun is just coming out. I normally do not ever film this early. I normally film maybe late morning to like afternoon times. I'm kind of goofy, but we are here in front of the bookshelves. It has been a while since I have sat in front of my bookshelves and talked books with you guys and I have missed it. So we are going to be doing a winter wrap up today. I think I did a November wrap up, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look and link things below. I kind of fell off the reading wagon in December. I mean, I was still reading, but I was, it was very slow just because of the holidays and a lot of stuff going on. I didn't finish anything in December. Moving on to the new year, I was determined to, you know, finish those books that I had been reading in December and get really get like a jump start on reading. So I set my Goodreads goal. Honestly, now I don't even remember. Okay, I was correct. So my Goodreads goal for the year is 30 books. It may not seem like a lot to some people, but that is what my goal is. I've actually read, I have read 12 books this year. So we're going to go over all of those books and I'm also going to add in a 13th just because I only have like two chapters left so I'll talk about that one at the very very end. Getting in to all these books. The very first book I read this year was Where to Begin by Cleo Wade. I will insert pictures probably <laughs> because I have been doing good about doing like ebooks and audiobooks along with you know all these beauties. So, Where to Begin by Cleo Wade. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It was just what I needed, I think, to begin the year. Like, a fresh start. Even though I was still in the middle of some books from December, I just wanted to pick up a fresh read. I had my Kindle. I wanted to read something on my Kindle. So this was the very first one that I picked up and I loved it. I don't know what it is about poetry. I'll kind of talk about this a little bit later too, but I never really remember what the poetry is about. I just remember liking it and it being like what I needed to hear in that moment. Like when I sit down to read poetry, it's normally when I'm being kind of introspective, kind of working on myself, that kind of thing. So that's what I like to read poetry for. I normally sit and read a small book in like a day or two because it's just like I normally pick poetry up at a time where I just kind of need it in my life. So almost seven minutes and I'm on book one. So let's get a move on. Book two was The Little Book of Higa by Mike Wiking. Wicking? I give this book a four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it. Um, there were some parts that I kind of just skipped through because I was like, like all the statistics, some of that I didn't 
necessarily read line for line, I just kind of skimmed it. I shouldn't say skipped through, I skimmed through. But I, I really liked. I feel like I already did some of those things and it some of those things just come naturally to me. But I also, it did make me think about, you know, what can I do kind of every day as like little luxuries to just give myself some happiness and give myself some like ambiance and just make my home a happy place to be and really the thing that I took from this the most probably is having like a million candles now. <laughs> Third book that I read, I read on ebook again and this was The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde of course and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this. Now, I normally do not go for classics, but this one was a good one because it was a play and it had so much like humor to it. It was just like, I feel like the one word I can use to describe this is cheeky. Like it was just a cheeky little play and I really just enjoyed it and I read it super, super fast. I almost said super quickly. I read it super quickly, meaning super fast and super quickly. All right, next one I read, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turnton. This one, I'm sad to say I'm giving a two out of five stars. This was one of the books that along with um, The Little Book of Higa um, that I was reading throughout December and this one I don't know if I give it a lower rating just because it took me so long to get through. I feel like I was kind of in the middle of like, again, a reading slump, also a lot of stuff going on. So it took me a while to get through this book, but also I felt like it had a bit too much going on. Like it was a bit hard to follow. If you don't know what this book is about, it's supposed to be about, let's see, the premise said, you like so and so uh, wakes up and he realizes he's in a different body but he has seven or, or he has eight days to figure out who murdered this person and every day he wakes up in a different body and it's supposed to help give him clues to solve this murder mystery and it that sounds amazing but then it he like it was, I don't even, I can't, see, that's the thing. I can't like verbalize it out loud. Like that's why I just, ugh. I don't know. It just was a lot going on. Not my favorite book and I gave it a two out of five stars. Let's just move on. Fifth book I read was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I gave this book a five out of five stars. This one, again, went super fast because it was written in prose and it's about two girls who live in totally different countries. One lives in New York, one lives in, is it Puerto Rico? Or, oh my god, why can't I remember the country? One lives in New York, one lives in, I will insert the country because I completely forgot but it is about them and just their life and their relationship with their father and how they kind of interconnect. I, I'm gonna just leave it at that. But it was a very good story and oh my gosh, my foot is falling asleep. Where was I? Number six, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. This one I gave four out of five stars. This one, I really enjoyed all the different perspectives. It involves these three different teenagers and uh, just kind of how the decisions that you make younger in life can affect like your future and how it's all intertwined and just, uh, just their story and about their life and their community and it all revolves kind of around this church and they have a group called the mothers who kind of you know take care of everyone they're looking out for others in the community you know doing bake sales all that kind of stuff that church moms do it's about that 
and um, yeah, how it is all intertwined. It is a very interesting story. I will say that. Um, spoiler alert. The reason I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars was because I didn't really like how the author seemed to be like encouraging this affair between, you know, the couple that originally had the baby and an abortion. And I just don't like how none of them, neither of them really told the other girl what was going on. I can't remember their names, but I'm like, one, it was her best friend, and two, it was his wife. I'm like, you you didn't tell them what was going on? Like, you can't, like, even after the fact that, like, I don't know, she knew that there was something going on, but you never told her the whole truth. I did not like that, and that is why I gave it a four or five stars. Moving on. The very last book that I read in January um, was The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. Kaur? I still, I never know how to say these names, guys. Um, I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Again, another poetry book, and I always find myself normally enjoying them unless, like, literally if it's a poetry book that I'm not really liking, I probably won't be finishing it. Um, but the ones that I do like, I fly through and it's like just what I need. She just knows how to go to like the darkest places but in the best way in order to make you feel like seen and just give you a perspective that just like helps you to kind of acknowledge your darkness, the darknesses in your past and just kind of move forward and grow through it and very encouraging stuff. The next book I read, completely different. <laughs> this one I listened to on Audible and I highly, highly recommend you listen to it that way. It is The Bassoon King by Rain Wilson. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I would probably give it like a 6, 7, 10 out of 5 stars if I could. It was just, you know, it's about Rain, his life, he narrates the book himself, which just makes it so amazing, and oh my gosh, the, just the stories he tells with such, like, they're so, some of them are just very graphic. I'm gonna say that, but like, in a very funny way, and oh my gosh, I just, I so enjoyed learning more about his life and just his journey through acting and little bits and pieces of his time from the office and just, oh my gosh, it was hilarious. Highly recommend. The next one I read um, in February was The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. And I gave this one a three out of five stars. I got this book for Christmas. I was excited to read it. Um, which is why I read it in February, and so it's supposed to be about Mozart's sister. Mozart apparently had a sister. We don't really know a lot about her, right? So it's all about her perspective, and it was interesting. It's also got like a fairy tale thing going on with it, and I just, I enjoyed it for a while, and then about, I feel like it was like three quarters of the way through or two thirds of the way through. It kind of took a turn for the weird. For a while I was like, this would be a really great middle grade novel. And then it got weird. And so I will just say that, but it was still entertaining. I will say that I gave it a three out of five stars. So it's not bad by any means. It was just got a little weird and not quite what I was expecting. So. The last book I read in February was Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I thought I was going to be like, of course it's going to be a 5 out of 5. I have not actually like read Shel Silverstein poetry probably since grade school. And I forgot. I mean, 
Granted, they're short, they're sweet, they're funny, they're meant for children. But I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars because I'm like, oh my god, he talks about cannibalism a lot. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, people eating people or people eating animals or animals eating people or weird combinations or made up things. But yeah, kind of a lot more cannibalism than I was ready for. <laughs> This brings me to the books that I read in March. Uh, the first one I read in March was Unwind by Neil Schusterman. This one is kind of funny. I actually was decluttering at the time and I was like, you know what, I've had this Unwind series on my bookshelf for probably at least two years and I've never picked it up. Let's see what it's about. Do I want to keep it? So I read the synopsis and I immediately started reading it. Because I was like, oh my god, that sounds so interesting. I need to know what it's about. It's a Neil Schusterman novel. Gonna be good. So it is about this concept that they have... It's about an abortion debate, essentially. And this future society has decided that uh, rather than dealing with abortion, no child can be touched until the age of 13 after 13, between the ages 13 and 18, you can like submit your child to this process called unwinding, where they basically separate all the body parts and use them for things like if someone needed a heart surgery, here, have this heart from an unwind. Oh, if you broke your arm and have, you know, nerve damage, you can't not gonna be able to use your arm or you're paralyzed. Oh, we'll just give you parts from an unwind so that, you know, you can be fine now. It's very interesting how they use the parts from unwanted children to help, you know, medically. I don't know. It's a very strange concept. It was very interesting and I'm going to continue with the series. So yeah, I was really excited that I, you know, picked up a good book in the process of decluttering and I'm glad it made me actually start the series. <laughs> the next book that I read in March uh, was another Audible pick and another one that I highly recommend you listen to and that is Failure is an Option by H. John Benjamin. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Again, hilarious like anecdotes and stories just from an amazing actor and voice person. If you don't know who H. John Benjamin is, he does the voice of Bob from Bob's Burgers or like Archer. I know he's done that show, but I've never seen that show. Seriously, I think I laughed out loud the most during his very last story, so please listen to the audiobook. And get to that last story it is the book is so good but that last one that last one really did it for me and it had me laughing out loud the f 13th and final book I'm going to talk about today is the book that I have like two chapters left in, and I feel like I pretty much know what he's going to be talking about so this book I am reading on ebook and that is the parasitic mind by Gad Saad uh, I am, I have a feeling I'm going to rate this 4 out of 5 stars. Now, the reason I picked up this one, I listened to an episode of the Joe Rogan podcast where Gad Saad was a guest and he discussed this book that he wrote. He is a professor, I don't remember what university he's at, but he is in within the academic community and he is a... Um, he's from Lebanon. He survived, like, a Lebanon civil war. He's also Jewish, and he survived, like, persecution for being Jewish, and, like, I don't know. He's gone through a lot of stuff in his life, but now he is a professor. And this book, The Parasitic Mind, talks about how, uh, especially academic areas like university campuses, are kind of like these places where these parasitic ideas come from. It just has to deal with like the zeitgeist, what's going on right now it, in this moment in time and how 
people's ideas are just kind of off the wall. Some of them are kind of bonkers and I'm not even talking about like conspiracy theory type people. I'm talking about like highly educated people who want to basically ignore science. And he discusses this and he talks about how the truth is exactly like what we should all be searching for. Quit trying to listen to the media and these like social justice, he calls them social justice warriors, who are like, oh, we have to have, you know, like, trigger warnings and, like, inclusion for everyone. Like, no doubt about it. Yes, those things are important. Yes, we should be including people. Yes, we should be helping people who have trauma to deal with, you know, who have triggers. But we don't need trigger warnings on everything. We don't need a trigger warning for life. So he's talking about how, you know, he went through a civil war. He described some pretty scary stuff that he's gone through. And I would definitely be traumatized, but he's like, you know what? I didn't need a trigger warning. I needed therapy. I needed to listen to the truth. I needed to, you know, just work on those things, but not be like complete. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like I'm doing a very poor job of explaining it. But please at least go look it up and read a synopsis. <laughs> I definitely think this is a book that a lot of people should read. Um, it's definitely eye-opening. The reason I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars is because it is very, like, academic reading. It kind of feels sometimes like reading a textbook. Um, not necessarily in a bad way, but there's just a lot of big language. He includes, you know, like in text citations, things like that. So if you're not in the mood for that, I would definitely encourage you to at least go listen to the Joe Rogan podcast where he was a guest and he pretty much talks about all of the ideas that he discusses in the book and they go into further detail and it was just a very interesting conversation to listen in on. So I will link those things all down below so you can go listen to that podcast if you want to go that route two. So, wow. Apparently I reached my max recording time of 30 minutes. So, if you have sat through this whole video, congratulations. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, for watching, for, you know, coming here and discussing books. And please leave a comment down below if you've read any of these books. So let's just have a discussion in the comments about books. I miss talking about books. It has been far too long and maybe I'll be doing some monthly wrap-ups again. We'll see. If you want, if you prefer monthly wrap-ups or like quarterly wrap-ups like this, let me know down below. What is your preference? The only problem with monthly is sometimes I don't read a book every month. So I'm doing my best. Gotta hit that, you know, 30 book reading challenge goal. So we can do this, everyone. I'm probably rambling on and on and on and on and on. I hope y'all enjoyed the video and I will see y'all in the next one. Have a happy day. Bye.